Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, another video, and I, what I'm going to start doing is making a weekly recap every Saturday. Uh, the uploads might be on Sundays some weeks, but I'll mainly try to get it up Saturday. Um, but basically, it's just going to be recapping all my videos. And so I just watched every single one of my videos that I posted this week, and I wrote notes on them, like the best lessons from them. And so I'm just going to read them off. And then we're going to go over my two trades I made this week and just kind of like what I've learned uh, with my new knowledge. So let's start with the state of my myself at the beginning of this last week. So I think I came into the week knowing what to look for, which is um, watching hot chicks for holding for holding their highs and then attacking after a confirmation. Uh, so that's what I came into the week looking for. And then kind of midweek, um, I had some struggles, and if you guys haven't watched all those videos, be sure to go do that. And actually, if you guys could like this video, I would really appreciate it, so it can get recommended to more people out there. Uh, that would be appreciated. So first, in the spot, in the SPI video, and each video has like what ticker I mainly talk about, so you can just look through those. So, uh, the SPI video, which was an actual trade I took, um, I explained my process where I'm watching these uh, these hot stocks that are pre-market holding up high like this um, that actually break down below view up and confirm and then I attack the bounce and then scale out at support levels. On the confirmation, you need to make sure it's broken way below view up and not trying to bounce near it. So I'll show you specifically here. Uh, you could see this wick candle. So when it had this first like kind of death candle through view up, I wasn't interested because it bounced right here and it was like it was on view up. I don't want that. But when it had this second candle that continued lower, that was good enough and that gave me distance from view up to actually scale to view up. And um, SPI had the small size, which is why my winner was small. Actually, I'll show you this. Um, so I am negative on the week. I only took two trades. And basically that's all I had because uh, I'm under PDT. But this, the SPI trade you can see is tiny size and the verb trade is max size. And so I'll explain that later. Um, but yeah, this one I only got one bullet executed with plans to scale and then stop out. Um, so I got one bullet and then I scaled out. I love this trade so much. And another note I actually made was not focusing on PL but instead executions. In this case, perfect. Like this was an awesome trade and I love it based on the chart, not on the PL. Uh, especially in the beginning, PL does not matter, especially when you're using small size and you have like fees that are basically taking up all your winners. It's best not to focus on the PL and just think of it as research and development cost. So right now I'm researching, I'm developing my, my process. Uh, it's going to cost me money, and so I don't need to look at the PL. I just need to look at perfecting my executions. And in this case, I love it. Um, I covered, I just covered perfectly. Uh, yeah, I could have held longer for all day fade, but we're approaching, you know, 10.30 kind of. Um, and this was a major support level, so I got all out there. And I had tiny size, so I didn't have much to work with to scale out. But in the DTSS video... Uh, I was talking about a struggle, uh, not to deviate from the process, um, from your own process. So if you only focus on one or two setups, you need to only be looking at one or two setups and don't get distracted by all the other, all the other stuff going on. Think of it as noise, like Bao says. Um, so just try to drown out all that other stuff and just zone in on your setup so you can learn to master so you can learn to master it, and then once you master it, you have something to fall back on, and you have something that's consistently earning you money, um, and then you could start learning more processes, and uh, sorry, you could start learning more setups. And it's okay not to trade. It's okay, you, you need to go into every single trading day expecting not to take a trade. Uh, with that mindset, uh, you'll be excited to know that there is a setup setting up for you, and you can play it. But come into every day expecting not to trade, and you won't be um, you won't be an over trader. You'll stick to your process. So getting onto the verb video, which is this trade right here. Um, there, the reason it failed. Well, first of all, I'll quickly explain the setup. There was a trend line. It was a multi-day runner, um, and then on market open, 
when I saw this huge just uh, death candle, it tried bouncing and it failed further down. I said, okay, in, the probability is high on this one. Um, it should fail to bounce and just continue lower, especially because it broke this trend line here. Um, but it squoze, or uh, I think that's a word now. I don't know. It squeezed. Um, and I have, you guys should check out the video on that because that's really good. But only one other stock was taking the attention, and which was DTSS. And when that died, when that started bleeding and washing down, um, the volume had nowhere else to go but to Verb. Because Verb was the closest to VWAP, it was the only one that longs would be like, oh wow, this one's going to the moon. Like, think in a long mindset. Like, this is the mindset I think. If I had $100, uh, which, which stock would I put it in that has the most potential? And that stock was Verb because it was closest to VWAP at the time. Yeah, so I had my plan perfectly. I scaled, bam, 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 uh, and then stopped out over view up. I probably could have uh, planned to only scale down here and had to stop here, but I mean, a view up reject could have also worked. Yeah, my notes were maybe be more cautious when there's only one hot chick, because if that one dies, the volume could flow to your stock if it's not already broken. With my setup, I'm playing the stock as it's breaking. And so there is more risk because it is closer. Um, these, these, these setups do tend to, I think, trap uh, more often than a totally broken stock. But it's a great setup. I love it. Um, I had no emotions on this trade afterwards just because I focused on following my plans. If you, if you make a plan and follow it, you have no, nothing to be mad or sad about. You can analyze it and see if there's a flaw in your plan, but I don't think there was in my case. I don't know if MIC has talked about this, but I think one of the best ways to maximize your risk reward is to short as close to your risk level as possible. In this case, I guess I didn't do a, a very good job, I probably could have had another bullet. Um, but if you get your average close to your risk level, that means you're only risking a certain amount of cents uh, to make cents or dollars down. And so you can really maximize your risk reward by scaling close and getting your average close to your risk level. And so I always try to strive for that every, every trade. AEHR video, I sh this was the, the big struggle video that I asked everyone for help on. Uh, and you sh everyone gave such good responses. So I struggled with determining if I should only focus on one setup. Um, the advice I got was to only focus on a couple setups and learn to master those. Then you can expand once you have a setup that you're consistent with to fall back on. So let's say you master a setup like what I'm doing. I master these confirmation setups um, and I start moving on to shorting the VWAP rejects on broken sucks. Let's say I'm just failing and failing and failing at that. I always have something that's making me money and that I can fall back on, which is the confirmation or whatever setup you plan to master. Uh, and also Harry recommends when something messes up my clear mind, I need to walk away. I need to take a breath for five minutes and come back with a clear mind. And so um, I explained this on another video where I think it was SGOC. Um, I totally just, I totally missed this and my mind was messed up early on because I missed it. And that caused me to miss, miss another setup that was AEHR. I would have shorted this bounce right here, but my mind was just so messed up. So I didn't even take the trade. So at the start of the week, I was focusing on, you know, one to two setups, my confirmation setups. That was, that's what I was focusing on. Throughout the week, I contemplated whether I should start looking at other setups. Mainly what caused this is seeing friends and other people in MIC do so good at other setups because my setup didn't appear uh, as clearly as their setup. So the timing was just off. And so that caused me to get in my head about, oh, should I focus on something else? Um, but now at the end of the week, uh, the trader I am now is I'm going to drown out all that other noise. I'm just going to focus in on my setup. I'm going to learn to master it. I'm going to really just focus in and try to get the best I can, try to get the best executions I can. Um, like on this SPI trade, I, I'm going to be striving to get these exact same executions every time uh, and learning just to consistently get this.
Uh, also, I have some big news. I'm opening a second t Trade Zero account. So I'll have six trades, meaning I will have a trade every single day, plus one. Um, and this is going to be a game changer because three trades is just horrible. Like three trades means I don't have, I, I can't take advantage of opportunity every day and I keep missing things because I don't have trades. Or even one of the main reasons I hesitate on trades is because I think, oh no, this this is my last day trade. Um, if I take this and I fail, then I have, I, then I have to wait like multiple days to do this. And I always want to have one trade um, so I can't miss the best opportunity. So this is just going to be a game changer. Six trades is awesome. I have a trade every single day. If there's a setup that appears that I like, um, plus one. So maybe if there's two setups in the day, or maybe I want to add to a winner on one. Um, I just, a lot, a lot more flexible. So that's going to be a game changer. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this recap. Let me know in the comments, um, I guess, what you think about all this. Uh, and also be sure to like, again, because it helps... It helps this video get recommended to others and it helps the channel and I, my main goal with this channel is to one help me look back at my growth and really just track how 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 much i'm growing and maybe go back if i have the same struggle i can go back to a video and learn how i overcame it at that time uh and then the second reason is hopefully later down the road um i you guys can look at my whole journey from non-profitable to profitable and see the steps I took to become successful. And I hope my struggles and other people's answers can also help you if you, if you have the same struggles. I'm uploading every single day now, which is awesome. Um, I'm also uploading tomorrow on Sunday, uh, but that on Sundays, I think I'm gonna be uploading like uh, not day trading videos, but instead investing videos because I am investing all my cash soon um so just videos based on that kind of subject just finance and stuff like that uh that's just like a filler on sunday uh, but most of my content is going to be day trading because that's what takes up all my time so yep i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys tomorrow